These are the stretcher bars that you can buy anywhere. Uh, they sell art, you know, professional art supplies. They don't usually sell these at your local craft stores uh, because this is more the way the professional artists stretch canvas. The nice thing about stretching your own canvas is you can decide on any size you want. You can create regular canvases. And these are pretty cheap. These only are like 50 cents to $2, depending on the length. Uh, and they fit together quite nicely. You can get the thick ones, or these are just the cheap thin ones, but they fit together like this. And I buy canvas cloth. Uh, you can get it in rolls. This is a long roll. Yeah, I think it's like five feet. Uh, and it costs quite a bit, like $80, but just think about the, the, you know, at least 50 paintings you will get out of a canvas if you buy your own canvas roll. And I get unprimed canvas. It comes in different thicknesses, too. The thin is just fine for me, especially if you're making, this is a very small, small uh, painting. 15 by 13, which is an odd size. You want to get, you know, standard sizes are not bad. And if you go to the hobby store now, you can get standard sizes. But um, you can create odd sizes this way. Just be aware when you create odd sizes, the frames are not going to fit. At the same time, you can get custom-made frames or build them yourself. Or you can also um, just hang it with the stretcher bars, gallery wrap style. So, you can see how they fit together, just like so. You want to get it nice and square. You don't want anything poking out, so you want them to fit together nicely. Get a T-square. And check the sides to make sure they're a nice, sharp, right angle. This will prevent buckling in the future. It's very important that you stop the buckling. So these are on a nice sharp right angle. If it does buckle, they do have that, um, even there's a fix for that too. You can get these little wood slits wherever you buy the stretcher bars. You can get little wood slits that you can tap into these slots here and that'll, uh, that'll stop the buckling. It's usually the buckling in corners that happens, but if you stretch it correctly, then um, you're okay. Now, um, you want it to cover just about that much. I'll probably cut off the frazzled end here and use it sparingly. So if you can fit two on a, on a side, then that's good. You want it to cover the back. So I'm going to cut about that much. So this line, this crease right here might be perfect. Okay, so I have my stretch, I have my canvas here and my stretcher bars ready to go. And of course, you're going to make sure that there's enough to overlap on all sides and you can trim that later. I'll start with one of the long edges and I'm going to put a staple crisscross. I held my, this is a light staple gun so I held it down so it goes straight into the wood and doesn't stick out because this is heavy duty pine. When you stretch it, now you're going to stretch the opposite way first. So if, I, if you staple over here, you're going to staple one over here on the opposite bar. You don't want to stretch it too tight, just snug, just snug. If you stretch it too tight, it'll warp later on. If you stretch it too loose, then it won't tighten enough. So there's one and there's one. Now I'm going to come along to this side. And the one here. Notice the buckle. We'll get rid of that when we stretch the sides. Then I'm going to come to the opposite way here and stretch this side. Again, I'm putting my staples on diagonally, so they grab more material. Now I'm going to come to this side, the long sides, I'm going to staple a few more. And then always the opposite side. Always the opposite side. longer so I'll do two more here 
And one more here. We're coming to the corner, which is the tricky part. So I'm going to get them all up to the corners right about here. You want to stop. And these two here. And the opposite way. Okay, now I'm going to put my corner fold on the sides here. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to fold it in, tuck it in just like that. So you get a nice fold on the edge here. So make sure your folds look nice because those will be left. And of course I'll put at least two staples here. So that holds that into place. Now if I fold on this side, I'm going to fold it on this side. So I'm going to tuck it in. Just so you get a nice single fold on the outside. I'll show you this in a minute. I'm going to fold it this way. Now, you can see my sides here. Here. Now, somewhat tight. You still see creases in it, but that's okay when we paint it that it'll tighten up like a drum. So the, the primer that we use, the gesso that we use, is going to tighten it up like a drum when it dries. It'll bond with the canvas and then tighten it up. Of course, you can buy primed canvas. It's a little bit harder to stretch. I will be able to trim this edge now so it's nice and neat and ready for hanging. And this is what we call gallery wrap. If you buy, it used to be when you went to the craft stores, they stapled it on the side because they were mass produced. Now they've started uh, stapling them the back because the staples do look ugly, even when you do paint over them. They don't look nice on the sides. And this one is presentable, allows someone to hang it on their wall just as is. Well, there's the back and the front. That's how you stretch a canvas.